Yeah, maple sh uh, syrup uh, production is very, uh, you know, it's a very uh, big, let's say, pass from the uh, uh, history to a very industrial thing. Uh, there are sugar houses now that they are even, uh, uh, they have instruments that are cleaner and, and uh, more technologically advanced than in my lab. So, but if we look at the, uh, the forest or the resource where they are this, uh, this industry is based, most of the knowledge is very crude. That's kind of a contradictory thing. Because uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, stresses that it's, it's outside in, in, in the environment. We, we're still having a lot of uh, dieback and decline of sugar maple, as we in Kobe. There are stands that are uh, just, uh, the composition is just uh, strikingly modified because of many stresses. I, I don't think you, people would like to have a sugar bush like that. For those who don't know much the species, how these uh, uh, fine uh, um, um, trees are all beach, beach, beaches under the old, uh, old sugar maples. Yeah, you see there's not much uh, regeneration, there's not a big future for this kind of sugar bush. Well, we've got other stress, biological stresses like forest and caterpillar. I know some uh, sugar maple that lost, uh, well, two years ago, 30% uh, of their trees because of this additional stress on marginal uh, sites. We've got also soil acidification in some, in many places. You must know that, well, uh, some soil have lost more than 50% of their calcium uh, reserve because of the history of acid deposition. Now it's, it's kind of past the story now, we don't hear it anymore because there's no more acid rain. Uh, but uh, it, it has a, a legacy, and soils are, uh, soils are, uh, there's a legacy of, of the effect on acid rain. So the soils, many soils now have been acidified because of this past stress. For instance, uh, you can find often the numerous, um, numerous pH uh, below 4, base saturation below 20%, and, and the rooting zone in the mineral soils, uh, even uh, still a very low pH and very low base saturation. And those who were with uh, Richard Carbonetti this morning, they, I hope he, he convinced you that uh, soil was the well, the, if you take care of if the soil, uh, the trees depends on the soil. So if the soil is not good, well, the trees won't, won't, do, won't be resilient to other stresses. We've, now we've got soil, some soil norms for sugar maples. Uh, based on the, uh, on the lot of uh, observation we've got in Quebec, uh, on the relationship between the uh, foliar nutrient status we, we, we got very well documented the foliar nutrient status of sugar maple and its relationship with the soil fertility. So uh, we use norms now to, to diagnose if the soil is good enough to support sugar rain or not. And my main is coming along with this uh, diagnosis because uh, well, lot of, we, we found that a lot of soils uh, are not, could not support a uh, good, uh, good maple growth and good maple nutrition. So uh, liming is getting very popular, well, has been getting very popular in Quebec because many soil were found to be uh, acidified. And there are so many, many people that invented machines to, because it was a real, uh, real dif difficulty. How, how do you lime a forest stand? It's not like uh, liming a, a a group, uh, an agricultural field. So people have invented machines that spread the lime in the woods. You know, many uh, well, like these, or like these, they kind of uh, spreading like uh, by hand. 
them by helicopter we can to to the sugar bushes that they have uh, difficulty to 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 uh, with the access i show you this slide about maple wood quality and soil fertility in quebec and because well, it's close to, to the Vermont states and just to show you this is this is about the wood quality not about the, the sugar ring itself but it's about the wood quality that the forester uh, uh, harvest the trees and we have here the uh, the wood quality of maples across the province and you see in the in the red these are the uh, the uh, the uh, hot spot meaning the, the good trees the, the nice nice bowls nice stems and the blue ones are not the, the well the ones that are less lesser lesser quality and you see in the in the Appalachian here in the uh, southern Quebec well the, the trees are not are not looking good for for lumbering and here also in the uh, in the Gatineau area in the uh, the Tennis Canning area, and this is a legacy, and also here the Laurentide Range north of the St. Lawrence River. We believe all these, uh, and this is related to soil fertility. We found it was really related to soil uh, acidification. So that tells a bit about the, the growth of the trees and the health of the trees in the, in the area. So we might expect that in Vermont we, we might find some some sites that are not good for growing well for growing a good quality tree uh, maples. We we can even find a good forester can see if a, a, a tree is looking is growing well or not. Uh, there have been some uh, publication from my. Uh, colleagues uh, less uh, two years ago about just looking at the bark of the trees if you have a smooth bark at, at your uh, at your uh, at your left and uh, going from left to center and to the right and uh, a more uh, a more rough bark the just looking at the bark you can see a, a bit about the growth of the trees oh, sorry. for instance uh, this is the uh, five, 5 year DBH increment, uh, diameter increment of the trees that is uh, as a smooth bark, an intermediate bark, and a rough bark. And that, you know, a forester can recognize these uh, good ones. Uh, a forester that is uh, uh, experienced with uh, sugar bushes can recognize if the, the stand is growing well or not. So we applied uh, at the time, and in that time we didn't know what, what was the, 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 um, the optimal rate of uh, application of lime in, in, in such a uh, uh, poor site. So we, we tried eight lime domes from 0 to 50 tons per hectare. And this is a look at the uh, forest stand. We see mortality across the, uh, the cover. Uh, as I said, it's a poor uh, acid soil, uh, trees don't grow well, you look at the bark and it's not good. The tree, the, the stands are uh, invaded by beech and so there's, no any, there's not any more uh, uh, regeneration in maple in these uh, sort of stand. And even if you cut off the, the beech to, to leave the place for maple, the maple won't come back because the soil is is, is not enough fertile to accommodate the, 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 the maple anymore. So, uh, so this is a this is a lost uh, sugar maple stand. Uh, these are lost sugar maple stands. So, if we look at the effect of lining on, on these uh, sort of of, uh, of sites, here we have the uh, dieback rate in percentage. Over the years, so we started the experiment in 1994, and 20 years later, you see with the different lime domes, though the, tree, the, the, the trees that were not lime, you see, they, they, they started to, to die, even though they, they look good in 1994-1995, well, about uh, 10 years later, they started to, uh, to decline. 
and those are any of the line rates we were applied that we uh, 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 kept there in the health. And even uh, looking at the regeneration, that the, those those uh, those trees, the the way we uh, we set up the experiment on the field is that it was a tree by a, a tree a tree base uh, setup. We uh, we line about five meters around uh, chosen trees in the in the forest stand. And so that's the only place in the in the forest where you can see a uh, maple regeneration. So we have, we have the circles of maple regeneration here and there in the stem, just because of the line. If we look at the different studies we can find in the scientific literature about uh, lining or fertilization on, on sugar maple sap, there's not so many, there's about you know, less than 10 studies uh, in different parts of, of uh, USA and some, some in, in, uh, in Canada. And you see all these, uh, these yellow uh, arrows. Uh, well, most of the time it, it has, a, it has a, a, a favorable impact on either sap yield, sap sweetness, or sire yield. However, you see the uh, sampling time years after treatments. It's always a, very, a, few, a few years after. The, the duration of the, of the experiment was only a few years after lining. Uh, this today, I will present you the result of 18 years after lining, what, what, where the three were responsive to, um, in, in terms of sap yields and sire uh, yield to, to this past lining. Okay, is, is lining good for sugar production? And that's a big question. Um, if we look just at the tree health, for instance, I, I pick up the two, uh, two examples, one from uh, uh, Wilmot and colleagues in 1995 that showed that the volumes of, of, of sap is inversely proportional to the crown dieback. So if you have a, a healthy tree, you, you, should, you should end up with more, more sap extraction than if you have a, a declining tree. Sorry. Another example is the experiment of uh, Dr. Perkins here, in where, where we fertilize uh, trees and we have sugar production in, in percentage uh, um, compared to the control, and we see over the um, over the, the four years after, uh, he could he could find a, a, uh, an effect of, of the fertilization on the on the production of. Sugar. So what about uh, our experiment happening 18 years after lining? Uh, we set up the. Uh, we set up the tubings and we set up the, the pump with the 20 inch vacuum. And we, we, we sampled, we, we, we tapped the trees only on, the, on three line doses for the, for the study. The, the control, the, the, the no, no line trees, the two and five ton uh, uh, line trees for a total of 20, 29 trees. And you look at the three, three diameters, they were divided between 9 and 20 inches. <coughs> so the result. If you still follow me? Yeah, good. Okay, and we, we look first at the growth of these trees. Uh, just to show you the, the growth of the young lime trees, 20 years before liming and 20 years after liming, just to to show you how, how, how striking the trees responded for at lining. So the, those, those uh, online trees in 1994, they were 35, 30 centimeters in deviation. 20 years later, they, they grew up only less than an inch. This is the, uh, an example of the uh, uh, two tons per hectare uh, lime trees. Uh, 20 years, you will see 20 years before, 
the age of the trees and 20 years after. And this tree in 1984 uh, uh, was 23 centimeters in DBH and it reached almost the same size as the uh, uh, online trees uh, 20 years later. Okay, let's look at the sub volume. So we, I'll show you a few graphs to show you what, what's the impact of lightning on sub volume. Um, we had our three dots here, the, the black line and the, the dark dots are for the control. The, the, uh, this type of line is for the two and the, this dotted line is for the five tons per hectare. We can see, we can, we cannot see much about about the, the impact of uh, of lining on the sub volume uh, given the initial DBH. Uh, only for the control we can see the good relationship, but the lines sort of uh, mixed up the thing, so there's no real impact of lining here on the sub volume. Uh, here too, uh, if we, we took the pre-treatment ring, uh, ring width, the, the tree ring width uh, before lining, uh, we can see a good relationship between the the the, the, uh, the sub volume and the lining at the five. But this, you know, doesn't mean much because the of course the line dose did not influence the uh, the pre the pre uh, the pre growth. So. Uh, and here again, we don't see an effect of lining because all the all the uh, the dots are, are well, like more or less lining with, with, with the post treatment ring growth. So we don't see much, we don't see a direct effect of lining there. And the uh, the sub volume is about twenty seven meter per millimeter millimeter of, of growth. If we look at the sweetness, line, uh, the sweetness of the sap, again, there's not much differences, uh, even though you, you increase the pH or, or, or uh, the ring width, there's not much difference, but there's a, a, a direct effect of lining on sap sweetness of about 0.2, varying between 0.2 and 0.35 degree breaks. So it's about an increase of about 20% of the degree bricks 18 years later after lining. Still, we, can, we could, we could uh, detect that, that thing. And if we look at the calculated syrup yield, again, we don't see a direct effect of lining. Of course, everybody knows that if you've got a bigger tree, you get got a higher sap yield. So the, the set, the, not syrup, but the uh, set, but syrup. And syrup yield is well proportional to initial DBH or even the current DBH. If we look at the impact of the pre treatment uh, ring width, and again, there's no, no, no difference at all. Uh, but the growth, again, the current growth, the last, let's say the last 10 year growth of the trees is. Uh, as, an, as is related to the cyber field. So as the tree grows uh, faster, the, the sap yield is bigger. So here with the DBH, the, uh, the, cyber, the cyber field is, is increases by 0 0.061 kilograms per tree per centimeter of growth. And here, the, uh, the cyber field increases by 0.9, uh, plus minus 0.13 kilograms per tree per millimeter of, of, of uh, ring width. If we look at the relationship between syrup yield and sap yield, of course it's a almost direct relationship and there's no effect of lining on, on this relationship. And in terms of uh, syrup yield against uh, sap sweetness, uh, there, there's still a direct relationship, but well, less, less direct, but still direct, and no effect of lining on this relationship. And if we compare sap yield, 
uh, against uh, SAP's weakness, there's absolutely no relationship. So there's no dilution effect. We, if, if there was a relationship, a decreasing relationship, say, uh, if there was more SAP, there would be, uh, uh, there would, uh, the degree degrees would be uh, lower. There's no, doesn't seem to be a, a dilution effect. And again, we don't see a direct effect of lightning in this. So what's the conclusion? There's no direct effect of climbing uh, uh, aside the increasing uh, the uh, sap weakness by 20 percent. If we look at the at the different parameters we observed, the the pre-treatment ring three ring group, the post-treatment ring group, the cyropil, and the lining, we know that the the pre-treatment ring group will uh, will should. Well, should be related to some of the, the post treatment rainbow is somewhat related to the pre treatment rainbow. We, saw, we also saw that the uh, cyber pill is, is related to the, uh, well, we'll say the current rainbow. And we thought climbing would have an effect on cyber pill, but we didn't observe in our results this, this, this other. And, but we observed that climbing had an effect on the current three groups. So, it, so if we look at the uh, relative impact of these of these uh, of these parameters on one each other, um, so uh, the, the, the pre-treatment ring ring has a has a positive impact on three ring group, pre current three ring group. And the current ring group has a positive impact on cyropium. And limine has a positive impact on the current ring group. And there was no, no, uh, no relation between limine and cyropium. It was not significant. So what is the total direct and indirect effect of limine in that? If we just look at the uh, current ring group, it's uh, you know, 0.65, that's a relative number the, because we want to compare the, the different uh, fluxes. If we look at the effect of the initial triggering group, the pre-treatment triggering group, we have to multiply these two coefficients, so it's, uh, it's still a, a significant effect. So past triggering group has an effect of uh, on, on side appeal, so in it, would say initial growth has an effect uh, uh, even 18, 18 and 20 years later on, on the on the side of, here, uh, of trees. And if we look at lining, we have to sum up this arrow and this arrow here that goes to post treatment and so and lining has somewhat uh, half an effect of free rate growth. So if we have a good tree that was going well before before uh, uh, before that, before we started to to uh, uh, to tap it, um, so it's going to lining wouldn't do wouldn't do much. But if the tree ring was uh, was very well, the trees did not grow well. Well, lining will will improve this by by as compared to a good site. So the conclusion that three deviation growth rate was related to cyropil, but lining had only an indirect effect on cyropil via increased growth. So um, in many many soils we have, at least in Quebec, there's a lot of uh, uh, just to show you the, the importance of soil on the on the health of the stands and building uh, uh, a good uh, a good stand with uh, maintaining three vigor is is a key to a sustainable uh, maple production. Uh, the other side of lining we, we looked at is. Uh, is good. I mean, it's good to improve the, the soil condition for uh, invasive species like uh, this this kind of worm that we 
we, we didn't, we don't get still in Quebec, but the, it is presented by Rot. I suppose I, I, I heard it's it's called the crazy snake worm in the in the species. And well, if you like, we we did an experiment in Quebec. We we imported some of these worms and in the microcosm and and, and, and lime on the soils and the, in online soil they, they cannot survive and the, the soils in Quebec are too acid. But if you line the soil they, they're gonna survive. We also look at the red back salamander because it's a very indicator species. Uh, red back salamander is the as the if you look in the in the sugar bush, red back salamander has the most biomass, even bigger than than uh, uh, squirrels or moose or or, uh, or deer. It's the the biggest living biomass uh, in in the sugar bush, and we found that there was no effect on lining of this uh, species. So at least it's looking good for that. So that's about what I have to say. Well, uh, I thank you. I, I'm going to take your, your question if you have any. Thanks. Rock, if liming in the short term doesn't have any effect on serve yield, but if you have a healthier stand that's more sustainable over time, you're going to increase your serve yield over time because you're not going to have the dieback. Is that true? Yeah, that's right. The thing is to is the is the diagnosis. You, well, I, I should have shown uh, some 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 effect of lining on, on a, a good soil. There's no way, there will no effect at all. So it's throwing like if you want to line your, your sugar bush and you don't you don't do a, a soil analysis, it's like uh, by throwing your money in the wind, you know, through the window because you, it's got, maybe it's going to do nothing. But so if, if you, uh, have you have to have a good diagnosis. If you have a soil test and it shows that you have marginal soils in, in a lower pH, then liming is certainly going to affect the, the vigor of the trees and they'll be more vigorous over time. Yeah, that's what we, we used to find. Exactly. Um, as a forester, I'm always thinking about the future of our forests, and so regeneration is key to that. Initially talked about it, and um, so just wonder if you had any numbers you can throw out there about differences in treated versus untreated and the response you got for sugar maple regeneration, and, and, and particularly how beet responded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the question is about the uh, maple regeneration in lime and how the beech or other species respond to, to lime. Um, well, you've seen the site, there are very marginal sites. We most mostly sites we have in Quebec, the soils are acids, and uh, for uh, for some uh, for some many reasons, the, the soil does not support well maple anymore. If you you don't uh, you don't uh, work on with, with the soils, and the, uh, so the uh, my experience is that the uh, the regeneration goes very well with with climbing, and we can save stands. Uh, if, if you don't climb, you're going to lose your stand. Like, like uh, these stands uh, where we, we got a lot of ferns, if you don't remove the ferns, and if you, if you just remove the ferns, the maple won't, 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 uh, won't uh, establish themselves because the soil is too acid. So you have to remove the ferns and also line to make sure you, you've got some maple back. And regarding other species, uh, yellow birch is a uh, is uh, somewhat responding also. When, when we found that uh, yellow birch was responding to lining, uh, not less than maple, because it's a less demanding species, but it responded. And why uh, beech did not respond? I never found in the literature and from uh, my experiences that beech responded to lining. It doesn't respond at all. So that's a good thing. And it can change the, the composition, well, I think it can change just the composition of the forest in, in the uh, elves changing it because if you've got a lot of beaches, then uh, lime and uh, acid soil, if you lime it, you can get in the in the midterm, you can get rid of, of much of the beaches and leave the place for maple to grow. What's your pH in Quebec? 
Well, pH are very low, as I show, showed you, uh, 4, 4, 4.5, but we found that it's not the best indicator of soil acidification. The best uh, indicator is uh, soil-based saturation or calcium saturation in the soil because of the, 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 the um, concentration of organic matter in the soil varies, you know, from soil to soil, and organic matter influences a lot the pH. So it, it's not really the pH itself that is a good indicator, it's more the uh, calcium saturation or base saturation of the soil. I used to, I used to work for Lee Lime Corporation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had high mag lime and we had high calcium lime, two different plants. For, for sugar maples, you want high calcium lime, I presume. Well, the question is depending about... On, the, depending on your soils test. Yeah. Your question is about the using what kind of lime, uh, uh, calcium lime or uh, uh, dolomitic lime. Uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, there, are, there are sites that say in the Appalachian Range in Southern Quebec, in Eastern Township, that uh, it's not recommended to, to, uh, to, uh, to use a uh, dolomitic lime, magnesium lime, because uh, there's a lot of magnesium already in the soil. But on the uh, Laurentide, on the uh, Canadian Shield, uh, on the north of the St. Lawrence River, uh, dolomitic lime is a preferred, uh, is a preferred uh, amendment to soil because the magnesium concentration of soil is, is really low. So it depends on which soil you're working with. So, how much it grows? in a maple tree is attributed to the calcium. Uh, how, 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 I don't know how to put this. How much level of calcium do you need to make a maple tree respond? Yeah. Because you gotta get it into the soil, not on top of it. <coughs> you gotta get it into the roots. That's where the worms work. Mm -hmm. Well the soil mom says that well, at least for Quebec soils, the minimum calcium uh, saturation of the soil should be above 28 percent. Below that, we can we can start to see uh, decreased calcium concentration in the leaves of the trees, and so uh, they, get, they get calcium deficient, and so the, the growth goes down, and so uh, so that um, so that that's the soil norm for, for Quebec soils. 28% of calcium saturation. We recommend uh, to, uh, in, in the case the soil is below 28% 20, of calcium saturation, we calculated that adding three tons of, of lime per hectare would, would bring up the soil in the long term at 50% calcium saturation. So uh, this experiment has been running out, running, running out now for 25 years. And from the soil analysis we, we have from these uh, experiments, we can see that, uh, well, the, the soil, the, the, the calcium saturation in the soil is going to last for uh, at least a, a century. So you have to, to do it once in, once in, a, in a lifetime, I guess. Well, I understand what three ton is, but I don't know what a square foot of a hectare is. Oh, it's, take, uh, it's about 1.2 tons per acre. One tons per acre. Just uh, uh, some things I've observed here in Limo County. Um, I recommend a lot of soil testing, and almost all of them come back with that cat or that uh, calcium number very low. And the recommendations are typically two to three tons per acre to get it up to where we want. Most most of the uh, diagnosis we we've done we. Uh, People, uh, most many soils come from the Eastern Township and the Appalachian uh, Range. So we, the norms we develop might, might, might apply also to at least some soils in Vermont. But so the rates are similar to what you're seeing. Yeah. Can I give you an equivalent? I have nine thousand apple trees. All right. Every tree, we put ten pounds of high calcium lime under it. I fertilized our land to the tune of about four ton of lime, high magnesium, before we planted. All right? 
Now we've got one more additive. Wood ash from electric plants. We put a lot of wood ash in because you get other minerals. Mm -hmm. My son went to University of Vermont, studied mechanical engineering. I said, jump over into agriculture, take a, take a course in soils. Because I know a lot about them, he doesn't. You send out leaves over your apple trees, okay? And they, they give you an analysis of what you need to put in the soil mm -hmm. to make that apple tree grow the best. He learned a lot in the soils course. And I, I directed them a lot too. Our soils, under our apple trees, they said, were the best of any soils in the state. Cal <laughs> calcium, calcium <laughs> is the key ingredient to making wood grow. It is. Well, at least for some species, some species like acid soils, like conifers or even beech, beech, uh, beech can uh, thrive in acid soils. But the species like sugar maple, apple trees, and other species, well, they, they need calcium to grow and, and be in health. So, uh, so, soil test is really the best way to get a complete picture of what the status of the soils in your forest. Can you get enough from a, from a foliar test to know whether or not it's worth liming in your sugar bush or do you would you always recommend doing a, a full soil soil test well we recommend a, a, a few things a soil test is mandatory but also looking at the stand inside the composition of stand uh, are there uh, species that, that are more uh, um, like uh, beach invasion from invasion do you see some indicators uh, uh, species like uh, some uh, some some uh, plant species uh, in the uh, under under in the undercover they are good. Now some are very good indicators of the uh, soil fertility or the, the stand by vigor too. So all taken because the soil norms are you know this it's like a, a medical diagnosis. It's not a, a perfect diagnosis. It's precise. Some, uh, between uh, 70 and, and 90 percent. So there's still a 30 percent uh, 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 uncertainty associated with the soil, the soil, the way you the, the way you sample it, and you know there's many factors. So uh, it's some, it's only one one uh, indicators among, among the, the other indicators that you can use to to make a good diagnosis of if your soil need, uh, need to be lying or not. Mark's question. I got a limited amount of money. I can do one test. Am I testing the soil or the leaf? What would you do? Well, it depends. Uh, leaves are not easy to, to collect. You have to collect it in a, in a precise uh, time frame during the summer. And you got to, 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 uh, to also uh, harvest the leaves uh, that are the, the upper third of the trees. It's not easy to reach. Uh, I have uh, telescopic poles to do my experiments. So they, they can go up to 20 meters, but sometimes trees are, are even higher than that, so I cannot sample them. Of course, we have a better knowledge of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, diagnosis using uh, leaf concentrations. But you know, soil is so much easier to sample, so that's why uh, we we use. Uh, most of them, but the majority of the time is uh, soil analysis that, that works. Yes? So to start, basically you look for dieback and no regeneration of maples. Yeah, that's a sign. That's a yeah. sign that something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. There's some regions, in just, like in my place I have one, maybe uh, five acres out of 40 where it's like that. So I'm thinking about soil samples. I was working recently, uh, I'm writing a paper about that, how much carbon goes into sugaring. You know, it's a, it's a long lasting question, how much, you know, do, do we uh, stress so much the trees, we take up 
our, most, our, all our a small part of its resources to, to build its, its leaves, to build its uh, instruments, everything. I've been thinking about that a while. And I, I share with you my, my answer today, my opinion. So uh, I started to think about uh, let's take a maple and you want to grow it from 20 to 30 centimeters DBH. You know? So we, we have a good, good uh, models if you look at the literature, uh, such uh, uh, trees with such DBH as such biomass and uh, trees with, with 30 centimeters of the as such biomass in its leaves, in its roots, in its, its stems, its bark, etc. So you have here a, a 20 centimeter gro a tree, gro tree uh, maple, and it makes leaves, you know, and uh, it loses its leaves in the spring. You, you take up the sap, and uh, the tree has grown its roots, uh, some roots, and the year after it, leave, it makes leaves again, and the, the leaves fall. The, the, some dead, there are the dead roots, there are new roots that, new fan roots that have been uh, produced and things like that, the tree grows. And you grow like that from 20 centimeters up to 30 centimeters. If we have a slow growing tree, let's say it grows only, the ring width is only one millimeter. So it's going to take 50 years to, to pass from 20 centimeters to 30 centimeters. If you have a fast growing tree, let's say it grows two millimeters per year, the, the rain width is two millimeters, so the diameter increases by four millimeters every year, it's gonna take only 25 years to, to get from 20 to 30 centimeters. So these are, you know, calculations on my, on my desk. And, you know, it should, it should be uh, real. So what is the proportion of carbohydrates that are harvested? You know, if, let's say you cut the trees when it's starting to be 20 centimeters and you stack it every year up to 30 centimeters. So uh, how much, what's the proportion of carbohydrates uh, you harvested uh, during this time? Let's say if we have a slow growing trees or fast growing trees. Any thought? Any guess? I don't have any prize to uh, yeah. hold the winner, but uh, very small. Very small. Um, I'd say less than five percent. So that's not really a concern for you guys. Hold on, but that assumes <laughs> does that assume that every bit of carbohydrate is available to be harvested from the tree? No, it's, a, it's, it's, it's assumed that uh, with, uh, you know, there are equations that relate 3 dBH to sap yield or syrup yield. So we use that, that type of equation. So I calculated the, uh, also the, the growth of the trees, the, the amount of fine roots produced every year, the amount of leaves produced every year, the amount of sap, of sap taken up every year, given the diameter of the tree. And I come up with this with this. Thing. My own guess. For a slow growing tree, the amount of uh, carbohydrate harvested uh, year after year for a slow growing tree for, you know, so for, for 50 years, we see that the, uh, the amount of, this is the trees, the tree growth in diameter, making its branch, its coarse roots. And this is for foliage, the amount of foliage that is being produced. For by the, this tree, and this is the amount of fine root that has been produced, and this is the amount of of sugars taken up uh, by the, the sugar maker, uh, maker uh, over these fifty years. So that's that's a really, as you said, that's really small. So the part of uh, uh, net primary production that of, of the maple that is taken up by the by the sugar maple, it looks very small. What about a, a fast growing tree? Well, it's, a, it's about the same thing, but the, the, uh, the biomass is divided uh, uh, different. Tree growth is a lot bigger. 
And so, because it's a fast growing tree, it didn't need much, as much foliage to, to produce this, uh, this, uh, this growth. And the, uh, the, the fine roots also are the uh, less fine roots. And you see the, uh, the amount of, of sugar uh, taken up for 25 years is, is still a very small number. So I don't think we, we have to, uh, because it's a, uh, it's a question that has been uh, worrying uh, some sugar maker, uh, maker. Uh, we don't have, because we were always increasing, you know, the, this vacuum and we thought, well, I mean, we're taking much more, much more sugars than we used to, to do for, uh, for, from these trees. So, I don't think it's a really uh, big concern, concern, at least from my, my calculation. So, are these trees that are growing uh, canopy trees or are they suppressed trees? Well, it's... It, the, the equations I use to calculate the, the amount of foliage and branches and uh, coarse roots are taken that from the uh, literature. So it must be the average trees or the dominant or co dominant yeah. trees. But what, what do you think the percentage would be if you went to a smaller subdominant or suppressed tree? Well, the yeah, picture would be very different. Yeah, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing I would point out is that. If you start talking about much smaller trees, I would think the proportion would be greater. Of course. And 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 what isn't always known is is um, how much you're actually taking from small trees. Since a tubing system, everything gets homogenized and put into one pipe, and you don't see mm -hmm. you don't see what you're doing. The relationship between slow growing and fast growing is five to four. But the trees getting bigger faster, mm -hmm. so that the faster growing tree is producing more sugar per year. Right or wrong? No. Well, no. It's based on the on the DPH. So uh, well, my calculation. So uh, the, the tree. Yeah, let's say you, you got the tree uh, that is now uh, from 20 to 25 centimeter. At the 25 centimeter, I calculated the, the amount of sugar produced from a, a tree with this DBH. So every year, the, the, uh, the percentage of sugars uh, is compared from a slow growing tree to a fast growing tree. It's just the, the amount of, of carbohydrate uh, uh, extracted over over this this three growth period, that is uh, that is uh, different because uh, you harvest uh, you harvest with the slow growing tree you harvested sap for fifty years with the fast growing tree you harvested sap for only twenty five years. Well, whatever you said is right over my head. No, I, I did not get that. So. <laughs> well, it, it still has a. Some biological significance at some point because if you take four or five percent a year, it isn't a, it isn't very much at that one time. But when you comp compound it over fifty or hundred year lifetime of a tree, it does start to add up. Well, that that's that's what I was trying to talk about. But I think that's what yeah, happens. It's a compounding. Thanks very much, Rob.